Have you ever bought or sold an option, watched the stock move, and then have the delta do the exact opposite of what you expected? Or have you seen the delta change a lot more dramatically than you expected? In this video, I'm gonna talk about one of the biggest reasons why that can happen and why that's so important to your trading. A lot of traders use Delta in their trading. They use it as a strike selection tool, a profit and loss forecast, a hedge ratio, and as an estimate of probability. But most traders probably don't fully understand the impact of time and volatility on Delta and are therefore missing a key ingredient that can help give them a much needed edge in trading. And remember that having an edge is critical to your long-term success. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the time component of Delta and try to explain it in a non-mathematical and intuitive way. I'm gonna lay some basic groundwork and then at the end, I'll explain why it matters so much to your trading. Well, if you're not familiar with the basics of Delta, feel free to ask questions in the comments section of this video and we'll do our best to help you out. You can also catch us in the links in the description below. To explain the impact of time on Delta without getting too deep in the math, I'm going to focus on using Delta as an estimate of probability. Or the probability of what? The probability of an option being in the money at expiration. Now I know I'm going to have somebody out there in the comments correct me, and they're going to explain that Delta isn't really a probability of whether an option will be in the money at expiration. Now, I want to clarify that I do know and understand this. But in the real world, especially on short dated options, Delta is close enough to the probability that most traders use it that way. Professional market makers, hedge funds, the, Sh the Chicago Board Option Exchange, the OIC, and most major brokerage firms are okay with that definition, and so am I. Keep in mind though that Delta is less accurate as a probability in longer dated options and in situations where there's an unusual pricing such as a hard to borrow scenario or an extreme volatility skew. The delta for an at the money option is normally going to be right around 50. Now think about it this way. There are two ways a stock can move from where it is right now, either up or down. Binomial option pricing models don't really compute for the possibility that stocks can just move sideways. Option pricing models also assign an equal chance of a stock going up or down. They don't take into consideration things like fundamentals or market trends. So an at the money option has a 50% chance of being in the money at expiration and a 50% chance of being out of the money. Out of the money options will have a delta of less than 50 and in the money options will have a delta higher than 50. The deeper in the money an option is now, the higher the probability is that that option will still be in the money at expiration. Therefore, the delta will be higher as well. Well, let's demonstrate this by looking at two different options on the same stock. Well, the stock is trading for $40. We have an at the money call expiring in one week and an at the money call expiring in one month. Which of these has a greater chance of being in the money at expiration? Well, the answer is neither. They're the same. As I explained earlier, according to option pricing models, the stock has an equal chance of going up or down. And therefore, both of these options have a delta of about 50. In other words, these high options have the same statistical probability of being in the money at expiration, and time is not really a factor in their delta. But what if we look at a different strike price? Here we have an option that is deep in the money with only one week to go. We also have another option with the same strike price that has a month until expiration. Now think about this one. Which one of these options has a greater chance of still being in the money at expiration? Before I answer that, let me draw some lines on the screen. Here's the potential range that the stock is expected to move. In the real world, this range shows up as implied volatility, but I'm gonna save that conversation for a whole other video, and we'll just keep this one simple. As you can see, the stock could move much further in one month than it could in one week. Therefore, the option with only a week left 
has a much greater chance of staying in the money until expiration, even if the stock starts to move against it. Therefore, an option that is in the money with less time will normally have a delta much higher than the same strike price with more time. The effect is opposite on out of the money options. An out of the money option with more time should have a higher delta than the same strike price option with less time. Now here is where this information becomes useful from a practical application standpoint. Suppose you have a rule that says you have to adjust your trade based on delta. For example, you like to buy calls with a delta around 80 and then roll them for a profit when the delta gets to 85. Well, most traders who use delta know that if the stock goes up in this scenario, the trade should be profitable and the delta should increase. If the stock goes down, the trade should lose money and the delta should decrease. But what if the stock doesn't move? Let's illustrate what happens when a stock just goes sideways. I'll do that by overlaying a probability chart on our screen here. An 80 delta option is typically pretty far in the money and that's gonna be the case in this example. As we get closer to expiration and the stock doesn't move, the probability of this option staying in the money increases. As a result, the delta increases as well. And the problem for you if you bought this option is that you're most likely losing money on this trade due to time decay, even though your delta has gotten higher. And now you have to ask yourself, how do you adjust in this situation? Because your rules said to roll profitable options at 85 delta. Well, you have 85 delta, but no profit. So what is your rule going to be in this type of scenario? Well, this video is not about what rules you should or shouldn't use, so I'm not gonna dive into that topic here, but I just wanna give you something to think about. There are three primary variables that impact the value of an option, price, time, and volatility. This video covered a little bit about price and time and specifically how time can change delta. I left out the third major variable, which is volatility, but that's a subject for another video. As always, thank you for watching. Stay safe, have fun, let's go make some money.